This is fast food, where we aim to feed your addiction to speed. And today we're starting with a circuit that's very close to my heart. Like most racing tracks in the UK, Thruxton was built on an airfield. The unique thing about Thruxton though, is it wasn't built on the airfield itself. That's still out there, fully operational. It's a relentless building of speed and momentum, connected corners. And if there's one rule about setting a fast lap time here, it's never lift. You keep your foot pinned down to the floor until you reach this big braking zone here at the chicane. Anyway, I've got a very fast car and I'm gonna try my hand. This is the Ferrari F8 Tributo, the pinnacle of Ferrari engineering in a mid-engine sports car. And with the engine in the middle of the car, just behind where I'm sitting, it puts the driver at the center of the universe. But actually it almost never happened because Enzo Ferrari was dead against it. He believed that the horse should pull the cart, not push it. But it was a very brave and bold engineer that changed his mind. Carlo Chitti was Enzo's chief engineer and he was something of a genius. And he saw that mid-engined racing cars were the way forward. They were the future. And he was lobbying to have Enzo move all of his power plants to the rear, to the mid-engine, to give his cars that kind of balance. But Enzo wouldn't have it, it became a battle. And in 1961, Chitty led the infamous mutiny at Maranello, where the senior engineers walked out, leaving Enzo Ferrari to rue the day. Chitty went on, designed his own and Italy's first mid-engine sports car, the ATS 2500 GT, and proved the theory was correct. Enzo was left feeling very bruised by the experience, but eventually he saw the light and he named his first mid-engine sports car after his beloved and dearly departed son, Dino. Well, the rest is ancient history because here we sit, many decades later in the ultimate expression of the mid-engine sports car. And from where I'm sitting, it feels pretty perfect. This F8 model is called the Tributo as a tribute to its 3.9 litre turbocharged V8, which was voted by journalists as the best engine of the last 20 years. It's an incredibly versatile power giver, appearing not just in the F8, but also in front engine Grand Tourers like the California T and the Roma. Nobody else does that. Ferrari have no intention of abandoning their beloved V8s, and as soon as you press the loud pedal, you can see why. This is the most powerful V8 Ferrari ever fitted to a non-special, with 50 brake horsepower more than the 488, and at 1,435 kilograms, it weighs 40 kilograms less than its predecessor. A Ferrari have produced a succession of larger-than-life cars over the years, and you can't even say Miami Vice without seeing that white Testarossa. And I remember driving the 458 on Top Gear 10 years ago and thinking, just doesn't get any better than this. I mean, the 430 Scuderia rear was an absolute favorite, pure analog, even had a real working handbrake. And if Ferrari, you're listening, prego, ritorno il freno mano. I'd love to bring that handbrake back. There's something very, very special about this engine, the power delivery. There's no sense of turbo lag. There's nothing old school here. It's there the whole time. I can hear that whistle almost permanently all through the rev band. Peak power at 8,000 RPM. Oh, those tires. Hard into the brake pedal for the chicane. One thing's for sure from driving the 458 is that Ferrari did not have to add any more power. 560 was plenty, but they did. This car, 3.9 litre engine, turbocharged by two big fat turbos is knocking out 720 horsepower and that's largely McLaren's fault because McLaren came in with the MP4 CDB FG twin turbocharged and they pipped Ferrari's engine output by just under 50 horsepower now basically McLaren brought the machine gun to the knife fight if you mess with Ferrari this is what you get because this car is basically a nuclear weapon. Come on, baby. have really 
focused on trying to make this car accessible to its customers by making the most of their Manatillo system. A little knob here that enables me to scroll through different options to adjust the amount of support you get from the traction control systems and particularly the yaw control. That's a new thing. Now, in race mode, I've still got all the safety features keeping me planted, basically. But when I switch this across the CT off, turning off a modicum of traction control, but well, according to Ferrari, this car will hold a drift at the same angle as an organic one, but with 30% less steering effort. And I can actually feel that the car's yaw control is there just to support you in the drift. So it takes note of your speed, your angle of attack, the amount of steering you've got on, and it thinks, well, you just need a little bit of extra front brake to tuck you into that corner. So as I brake down to second gear, let's give it a bootful. It's actually unspinnable almost. Here we go, let's try this. Third gear, yeah, I feel it working. It really is there, oh my God. In that setting, I feel like a bit of a hero without much risk, and that is the entire idea behind this. It's car basically can grow with the driver. You can start down in wet mode, just don't tell your mates that you're in a wet mode. Then you can bring it on up to sport and then race. Finally, CT off. And for me, it really does feel like the car is absolutely on side with you. Just nip and tuck through this chicane. Give it some beans now. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy. The only thing left to do really is turn this bad boy off. Let's see what I'm made of. That's everything off. Three beeps. Don't screw this up. All on me now. So I've had my fun, but to be honest, I have been holding back a bit. So to really push the envelope of performance in this thing, I think I need a helmet. For me, the 458, with its intuitive handling and linear power, marked the end of an era for sports cars. 
the F8 Tributo is on another level, a supercar with a dual personality like the Incredible Hulk. Its technology allows you to harness its ferocious power, but if you decide to take a walk on the wild side, there's enough performance to smoke half the grid at Le Mans. In that sense, it's the perfect tribute to Ferrari.